In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to prove that the derivative of the sine function is the cosine function. I'm also going to show you how the sine function changes as x changes, how the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. I'll walk you through that. And here's the final proof. It looks a lot worse than it is. It's kind of like a head wound. But I will walk you through it step by step, so hang in there. I don't do the trig identities in this proof, but there's links to each of those as I use them in this video. You'll see it as it pops up. Let me draw out or graph out the sine function. It looks something like this. It's a wave. It goes up and down like that. And when we take the derivative, we want to know how does the sine wave change as x changes. And what you can see, it goes up and down like that. The derivative of the sine function, actually the derivative of any function, is the slope of the tangent line. And this tangent line or the slope of the tangent line changes all the way through the sine wave or the function sine x. Like that. When the tangent line is horizontal like that, the slope of the tangent line is zero. And the slope of the tangent line goes from negative to positive, negative to positive, several times throughout the function. It's kind of crazy because the derivative of the sine function is the cosine function. And I'll draw that in there. So the slope of the tangent line at that point is slope of zero. And cosine is zero at that point as well. So everywhere the slope of the tangent line is zero or horizontal, cosine of x is zero. So every peak or valley of the sine wave, which is the blue wave, every one of those at that point, cosine of x is zero. At that point here, cosine of x is zero. I want to pick two points on the sine wave. I'm going to pick x1, and the function is equal to sine of x at that point. And I'm going to pick x2, and at that point the function is equal to sine of x2. The difference between x1 and x2 is delta x, or the change in x. And it turns out that x2 is equal to x1 plus the change in x. I can rewrite the sine function x2 over, I'm going to move that over, and I can put there sine that is equal to sine of x1 plus the change of x. That's the same thing as x2, right? So the slope of any line or straight line is equal to rise over run. The rise turns out to be that difference right there. So it's a sine of x1 plus the change in x minus sine of x1. Now the run is x2 minus x1, which is also the change in x, or delta x. Now, if I let delta x, or the change in x, go to zero, so that difference right there, I'm going to let it go to zero. I'm going to move it to zero. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Then I have a tangent line right there, and that's the slope of the tangent line. So now I'm going to take this function. I'm going to simplify this function. And this is the same thing as taking the derivative, the derivative of sine of x. I can rewrite this sine of x1 plus the change in x. I can rewrite that as sine of x1 times cosine delta x plus sine of delta x times cosine x1. If you're curious and you want to know why that works, I have a video with a link right below that walks you through this step by step, how that trig identity, which I just put in there works. 
Then I subtract off the sine of x1 and all this divided by delta x. And here we go. Next step. I want to combine some of my like terms and move them closer together. So I'm going to take these sine x1s and move them closer together. So this becomes... So now I'm going to group these together. Sine of x1 times cosine delta x minus sine x1. All this plus sine of delta x times cosine x1. Divided by delta x. And I just moved that delta x down. That's all I did. So now I have this sine x1 and that sine x1. I'm going to factor out. So now I have sine of x1, sine x1 times cosine delta x minus 1. So I just write in the right hand side of the equation. I'm just dragging this down. I'm doing this step by step. So I'm just going to bring that down. I didn't do anything to it. And all this divided by delta x. And now, give myself a little bit more room. And let's not forget that what we're doing is we're taking the derivative of the sine function. So the next step is to remember, we're going to take the limit as delta x goes to 0. I'm going to make two fractions. So I'm going to take sine of x1 times cosine delta x minus 1 divided by delta x plus sine of delta x times cosine x1 divided by delta x. And all I've really done is rewrite this equation out and made two separate fractions. So I'm just rewriting this again. So it's sine x1 times cosine delta x minus 1 divided by delta x. And I am just organizing the equation, just kind of making it nice, neater, tidy it up. Now I take this plus cosine x1. So I'll move that over to the front. So I have cosine x1 times sine delta x divided by delta x. Let me drag my limit stuff down right there. Let me just pause for a second and answer the question. Some of you are thinking, how do I know to do this? You don't because you've never done it. It's, it's a lot like kissing a girl or a boy, I guess, to lack of a better explanation. And with practice, you just get better at it. So I'm going to keep organizing. And I'm going to take that sine of x. I'm going to take each of these limits separately. So I'm going to take sine of x, take the limit of that, take the limit of this function or that fraction. So its limit as delta x goes to 0 of cosine delta x minus 1 divided by delta x. Then I take the limit of cosine x1. I'm going to do that separately again. So I have the limit as delta x goes to 0 of cosine x1. Then I take the take this times the limit of sine delta x divided by delta x. It turns out these two limits, the sine of x1 and the limit of cosine of x1, these are both constants. So let me show you what I mean by that. So now if I take the sine wave, and let me plot the sine wave back in, and I look at the limit of sine x1 as delta x goes to 0. So what happens to sine x1 as delta x gets smaller and smaller? It doesn't change. It's constant. So the limit of sine x1 as delta x goes to 0 is equal to sine x1. And now for cosine x1. Let me draw in the cosine wave. So what happens to cosine x1 as delta x gets really small and approaches 0? Nothing. It's constant. So this is all equal to cosine x1. So I can organize and rewrite this again. Put that back in. So that becomes just sine x1 times 
all this stuff to the right. Yuck. Anyway, plus that is just cosine x1. Let me put that in. Times the limit of delta x goes to zero sine delta x divided by delta x. Anyway. And kidding aside, if you can learn this, it's really going to help you in your calculus class. It really is. Trust me. So now, another trig identity, some trig identities. This goes to zero. So I can just ignore this part of the equation. And I'm going to show you a link to this in a second, so hang in there. And this goes to one. So I've created some visual proofs to walk you through this, to explain how this works, why that's the case, that's zero, that's one. And you'll see the links to those trig identities, so the proofs of those below. I'd encourage you to give it a go and look at it, look at those videos. And after all of this, I'm left with cosine x1. And let's not forget that the derivative of sine of x1 is equal to cosine of x1. And really, it's, it's, that's not cr exactly correct. I'm going to rewrite that as the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x. And voila, there you go. That's the proof. So, always share the knowledge, share the love, Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. Questions and comments below. Like the video. And subscribe. I'm going to be posting a lot of calculus stuff this semester.